Welcome to the Relationship School podcast. I'm Ellen Bader, and I'm here with your host. Jason Gaddis. What's up? Hi, honey. Hi. Got Ellen back, and we're going to talk about some classic dynamics, yep. some dynams, as we call them, in relationship. <laughs> and we put a post out on Instagram a while back. Thanks, everybody, for responding. Yeah. And the post was called, uh, which is basically the post, this post, uh, this podcast. When you're with a partner who claims they don't need anything. And we want to unpack that a little bit, what's going on there and what to do about it. Mm-hmm. You know, you might be that person that's like, I don't need anything, I'm fine. Or you're with someone. Chances are, because you're listening here, you're probably with someone who doesn't need to listen to this podcast. <laughs> and they don't need shit, right? <laughs> yep. And you're the one maybe who has a lot that you want to talk about or work through or address in the relationship. And so here you are. Yeah. Yeah. So what is going on when you're with someone who claims they don't need anything and they're, they might actually say that directly to you. No, I don't need anything. I'm fine. Or it just might be the way they act sort of gives the impression that they don't need anything. Yeah, they, it, it might be someone who's just hard to help. They function really well on their own yeah. and don't seem to need a lot from other people in general. Right. And, okay, so let's unpack this. We've talked about attachment in this podcast before. We've talked about distancer and pursuer kind of dynamics. This is very similar, right? We're, we're operating under that, that um, view here that, we come into the world differently and our, the causes and conditions um, start to leave a relational blueprint that would have someone not need anything because they grew up in a family like that. Yeah, it can definitely be related to family culture, just how, how relational the family culture was and how well that went. Uh, was it useful to reach out to people and uh, were people interested and curious about what was happening in each other's inner worlds. And just depending on those kinds of things, you, anyone would adapt to whatever the family culture is and then grow up to be someone who's anywhere on that spectrum of, wow, I really, you know, under stress, I want to seek out the people that care the most about me or under stress, I want to really go and be alone and work things out by myself. Like, that's, yeah. that's a simplistic way to say where we, most of us end up maybe leaning towards one or the other side. Yeah, and so with a partner who doesn't need anything, they probably had to, had to not need anything as a child. Um, or that's the, the perception that they created, that, that they saw was like, oh, it goes better if I don't need anything. Mm. So I'll just go to my room and read. I'll go outside and be alone. Uh, I'll just go to school mm -hmm. and I, I won't actually bring my tears here or my helplessness or my fear. My feelings. No, my feelings. No one's mm -hmm. really going to be here for me. Mm -hmm. And I also just want to say we also live in a culture that really values independence. And we, we really yeah. love those independent kids and those independent people. Yeah, and there's a lot of praise for independence. A lot of praise for independence. So oh, good boy, good girl. You can do everything by yourself. Yeah. You don't need You don't me need anything. Or anyone. My baby didn't need anything. I mean, you hear that from people too, like... Yeah, and a baby who doesn't a need baby anything is a good baby. Is a good baby. Right? <laughs> so. Oh, they're such a good baby because they don't cry or do anything. So that somehow gets labeled good. Yeah, so, so there's all those layers going into our experience around needs and relationship, relational needs, yeah. how we do our emotions, how we connect, what we share, lots, lots of things that happen that shape our way with that. Yeah. So chances are, if you're with someone who doesn't need anything, it's their history talking mm -hmm. and they don't, they might not even be aware of it because what happens to a child who doesn't, learns to not need anything is it becomes an adult that genuinely believes they don't need anything. Like, mm -hmm. I got rewarded for independence and I got punished for needing stuff, so I'm now an adult who I believe, I actually genuinely believe mm -hmm. I'm fine. And, and very bought into the belief that that's better, that yeah. it's better to be that way. It's better to be independent and not need stuff and not be emotional and not 
you know, not need stuff from my partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's strange, though, about this person is they, they do want to be in a relationship. You know, they find themselves in intimate relationships. Yeah. And they yeah. usually find themselves with someone who has some needs. <laughs> <laughs> so they, this person has to work on it usually eventually or, or address it, if, especially if the partner is saying, okay, wait, uh, something's missing here. Yeah. And I, and I also want to say the person who maybe is very willing to reach out and lean on people when they have feelings going on or they are working on something inside themselves and they want to talk about it and they want to talk about what's happening in the relationship. They grew up potentially in a family around people who were close to them that were, they were able to um, use as resources mm -hmm. under stress. And, and it might not have been perfect by any means, but, or even that consistent, but it might have been something that, oh, sometimes, at least some of the time, when I go to people, I get comforted. I feel better. I feel better and calmer from having done that. Yeah, which is why you might actually want to go to your partner who doesn't need anything when you're struggling. Mm -hmm. And they might be very supportive, which is awesome, mm -hmm. or they might feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. or kind of blown out by mm -hmm. your emotions or what you're bringing to them. Yeah, and, and we're sort of, uh, like another aspect of this that I just wanna say as we're talking about it is that we are wired to utilize each other when it comes to our emotional support yeah. and our emotional needs. Like our faces, our nervous systems, all of that is put together in a way where we are built to very efficiently manage big feelings, big experiences together. So that is a, just a natural human capacity that is in there that can get, you know, really nourished mm -hmm. and built on or it can get sort of neglected and and rusty <laughs> yeah yeah and so a person in under stress um you know we like to think that under stress we we actually do need each other mm -hmm. um but there are those people that under stress they go into their independence even deeper like mm -hmm. i'm the only one that can handle this this is my problem i've got to fix it no one can help me I don't want to burden anyone with my problems. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever their narrative is. Right. It's not going to help. Yeah, they, they're going to go kind of isolate. And what we know about human beings is long-term isolation is not good for us. Mm -hmm. It's not good for our health. So we're sort of taking the view here that we're social mammals and it's actually good for us under stress to, to need each other and lean on each other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and to have some capacity to do that and some capacity to provide that for others, that it, yeah. that it actually helps our relationships and helps the, the people we're close to feel more at ease, more, more calm, and more capable of facing life and all the challenges it brings. So it's not that everyone has to be the same or do this all the same way, but we want, we want, we want in an ideal world, I think we'd have an ability to reach out to people for support and offer that, and then we'd also have an ability to um, rely on ourselves yeah. at times because yeah. that's life too and in reality we we do need to be able to kind of be with ourselves and our own experience and work with that and so i think we all feel best when we have an option to do to do both to some degree yeah and it, and we're teaching our kids the capacity to do both right it's yeah. good for them to be able to handle themselves in moments when we're not there for them and be able to pick themselves up mm -hmm. by themselves and then there's other moments where it's really key for them to reach out and lean on us mm -hmm. for support. Mm -hmm. So we do want to build human beings that are, that are capable of both. Yeah. Independence, interdependence. Um, yeah. 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 So in a healthy or high functioning or good relationship, we, we do both. Um, there's times where Ellen's not there for me. I got to be there for myself and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And then there's times where, oh, gosh, I really need something and I want to lean into her and she's super supportive of me mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah. we, we have that capacity to do both in our marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we do with this person, Ellen, who is uh, saying they don't need anything? Um, if we find ourselves, now that you've got the enough backstory here of why yeah. this is, <laughs> what do we do about it? Well... <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that before we started. So yeah. 
There's a few things. So one is to understand a little bit better who you're with. So that's why we're giving some backstory. Like, look, this is often not about, it doesn't, it usually does not mean that your partner doesn't care about you and your feelings. Right. That is rarely the case. Uh, so we, so by understanding where they came from and who they are and how they're, how they're built and how they move through the world, it can start to take, c c diminish that feeling of like, you just must not care about me right. or care about our relationship. And because that's usually not the case. Yeah, so in other words, I think you're saying be careful of how you interpret yes. their, them saying they're fine and they don't need anything. Yes, or that, um, or if this person who doesn't, you know, quote, need anything is like, you need a lot, you're too needy, or um, I'm overwhelmed, or starts to tune out or check out or uh, seem like they're not listening or not paying attention, things like that. It, it's rare that they just really don't care. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they just completely forget actually about you because they're so mired in their own struggle yeah, or their own busyness or stress or whatever, and they, they genuinely aren't even thinking about you. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and that's... Which feels bad, of course. Yes. But it's not like an intentional diss or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so still, still you if, mm -hmm. if this is something that's bothering you in your relationship, you want to address it. And so you have that understanding, you have a little more space to think about them and then to start to uh, find a way together, ideally, of how to have these, these kind of deeper conversations about the relationship and about how you want, how you want to operate, yeah. how you want to do things, like um, how much... How to, how to have those kinds of conversations where it might start to feel overwhelming for the person who doesn't need much or, um, you know, that, that's one step. Mm -hmm. There's there's also the, because um, you're not going to be able to convince the, that person that they, you know, you're not, they're, they're going to struggle to find their needs. Yeah, and even articulate what's going on. Yeah, maybe. but you can be really open to them having them and inviting of that, you know, that's yeah. one thing. yeah. By the way, if you hear background noise, that's our kids. Yeah, they're um, going home for school. It, playing, yes. Pandemic um, going on. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm just going to offer a couple things you can say, okay. and Ellen might have a different take. But I want to, like Ellen's saying, I want to enroll them in a conversation about the relationship. Like, hey, um, you know, it seems like you don't need anything. Is that right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm great. Okay, well, we're in a relationship, and I'm curious. Is there anything that, because you're with me, because you've chosen to be with me, you've chosen to partner with me or get married to me, um, is there, could we make the argument that you actually do need some stuff? Um, and what is, what are those things that you need from me? Because mm -hmm. I, otherwise, why are we together? If you really don't need anything, it doesn't seem like there's a point to you and to be in a relationship with me. But I'm guessing you do have needs. Maybe you have sexual needs. Maybe you have needs around... Um, co-parenting or finances or so honey can we just have that conversation mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling a little mm -hmm. on my own here um, and I think as you're talking like the challenge with that is yeah. that <laughs> is that Tell me. just the word need I know it's is so like triggering a lot for, for, for some people someone it's, who doesn't claim they have any right so so I think there's also um, and I think this Ellen Bader comes to mind here to me, this other yeah, who's another been interviewed on the podcast here before. Her name sounds the same as mine. It's spelled differently. She's an amazing couples therapist, and she talked to, to you about this on the podcast. Yeah. But sometimes just the word "need" is really activating for people who really have disowned just having needs beyond like oxygen, food, right, shelter. shelter. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, I, I can live without I'm good. anything. Yeah. So. So ta trying to talk about needs, like jumping, that's like jumping into the deep end a little bit. But mm -hmm. it might be, it might sound more like, I mean, tell me what you think of this. Yeah. Like, um, what would you like, how would you like things to be? Like, what would have you, what would you love for us to do? Or how would you really like for us to do this? Because I think that when we're coming at someone with like, hey, I need this and I need that. That can be really off-putting sure. to some people. Not, it's not wrong to say, but some people just can't, they just get, they get stuck on the word need. And it's, it's a whole nother thing, maybe, mm -hmm. to say something like, 
you know what I would love here to like make a request in mm -hmm. that way like I would really like it if we did this what do you think about that or how would you like this to go oh we're really different there what's something what's like a way we could both get what we wanted out of that yeah. and you know also we don't want one person having to like lead this whole conversation and make do all the work we really in an ideal world you're both trying to find your way together in your relationship i just yeah and and we know that some that. of you are in those relationships and some of you based on the instagram comments we got are mm -hmm. not in those relationships you know yeah. people are like oh my god i'm with this and it's so frustrating and this is why i left yeah. my last partner because i didn't freaking need anything right um yeah so i just i want to yeah, say yes that. to what ellen's saying so i think it's i'm, I'm just going to keep advocating for my position here and you do yours because I think it'll actually help people find their way. Yeah. And I, just to be clear, I didn't say, I wasn't saying or suggesting leading with I need. That's true. You weren't. I was talking about what you need. Yeah. But the, all the of word it. Need <laughs> the is, word need. I know that the word need could be triggering. <laughs> um, so I, whatever the case, I'm still going to try to get their world around, gosh, it seems like you're always saying you're fine and you don't need much here in our relationship or that there's, you're good. Everything's fine here. Um, okay, got it. So are you fine with how I am the last week when I've kind of been irritated and clinging to you and wanting to talk? You're really fine with that? You know, I, I just want to understand them. Mm -hmm. And is it also like, I want to know what my role is if I'm in a relationship with you and you're yeah. fine all the time. Huh, that's a little concerning to me because it sort of suggests that like there's nothing for me to do here. I could be mad, sad, I could be taking a hike uh, with my friends all day long and you don't, you know, like you're fine. Or I could be in your space all the time and you're fine. So help me, help me understand you here. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yes. And I, you said something too that I think is important that when someone doesn't have any or isn't able to find or articulate their relational needs, mm -hmm. uh, it it's really hard for their partner to feel like they have a special and unique role yeah. in their life. And if you're in a, let's say a long-term or committed monogamous partnership, I think that's what we're primarily yeah. speaking to here is like, um, people like to feel like they have a special role and like, oh, I'm, you chose me because there's like something special about yeah. how, I, how I am with you or how we are together. and. So I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, people, we like to feel utilized. Mm -hmm. We want to feel like we have a special or prioritized role in our partner's life. Um, and so yeah. that's, that's part of just like having relational needs. I guess I'm speaking to the person who doesn't really know what they are. Like it's, it's really good to need or have some things you really love or like about how your relationship goes or how your partner is with you. Yeah, and it's maybe something you only do with that person. And, and sex is the obvious one. If we're in yeah. talking monogamy here, right. you're the only person I mm -hmm. make love to, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there might be other things like, well, gosh, you're also the only person that I um, vent to about X particular person, or you're the person I can go to when I'm struggling with my family of origin and my right. parents, because you understand right. me there. Right. You you have that special role. My friends don't totally get mm -hmm. it. Let's say. Mm -hmm. Or you're the first person I go to when I when something really important happens in my life, or when I'm having yeah, having to news, figure out a big news. decision, or yeah. You know, we want to have a primary role in each other's lives and know what that is. That's the benefit, folks, of a primary partner is is there. It's like a best friend. They were the they're the person we go to with the special things mm -hmm. in our life or the deep pain that we're in. Mm -hmm. And ideally, they will be there standing at our side. Yeah. Right. And this can be harder with someone who's like, I'm fine all the time. So I, I think what we're trying to underscore here is get in that conversation challenge yourself to have the conversation with your partner mm -hmm. you know that that there's something maybe out of balance in your dynamic because mm -hmm. um, if you don't you're gonna if you keep continue to not feel valued appreciated utilized um, special in your partnership you're you're probably going to start yeah. to feel more and more insecure and less and less interested yeah i'm also thinking about just some couples yeah. recently that 
you know, or in the past really that I've that we've helped with this. And mm -hmm. one thing that I've seen people figure out as they talk about this dynamic between them is they're able to look at their relationship in a bigger way and and the, the couples yeah. who na who end up navigating this well, I think, have been able to see that the way they want their what they want out of this relationship is very much the same. Like we both mm -hmm. want to yeah. have a relationship where we share these things together and do these things together and have the have this experience in the relationship. So like if if the bigger picture is like, yeah, that yes, yes, we mm -hmm. want we want the same things out of yeah, this relationship. We're going, there. we're going the same direction. Yep. And if I think if people have that, then these differences around how they communicate or how much each person needs and then how they navigate that, given different thresholds for that, yeah. uh, becomes a little easier yeah. to find a way to do that together. And no one has to become a different person, but both people usually have some growing to do around how they handle each other mm -hmm. and making that feel, making both people feel like their way is is respected is okay is okay uh is yeah. appreciated like wow it's really great that you are the one you know that that there's someone in the relationship that really brings up the relationship conversation a lot or is tracking how we're doing and is willing to talk about that that's really good to have someone like that in a relationship it's it also can be great to have someone who can who can function pretty well under stress and not and not need much and not need a whole lot yeah <laughs> that that's, can be that's a good an asset resource in a relationship at times, and so both mm -hmm. of those qualities can be useful. And if you're going in the same direction, that that really is so much more workable. Yeah, I kind of hear like if you have something that anchors the two of you together, your why, mm -hmm. uh, your purpose of being together, or where you're headed together, um, it's gonna help. Yeah. So the madness of the homeschooling. Going yeah, on they're like there. screaming and having fun though, yeah. which is great. I wish I went to school. I know it's really great. The hell, like it's so they're having so much fun. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So we'll say more on this, but I would suggest you go back and listen to, um, also go back and listen to episode 318 and 319. Ellen and I talked about how to communicate your need for connection or okay. separateness hmm. um, in those episodes, right? And they're short and sweet, and I think you're going to get a lot of value there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, hopefully this was helpful, and we'll talk next time. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Share one of these videos with a friend. We want to help the planet get their act together around relationships. And you are one of them, so thank you.